With a name like Pearl Black, I bet you guys were expecting a Jack Sparrow reference or something. Well, I guess I'll just have to disappoint on that one. All joking aside, today we are taking a look at the final ink in the Kaveco ink line. This is Pearl Black in cartridge form. Now, if you want to know what my all-time favorite is, then go watch my Namiki Black after this one. I mean, it's kind of in the name, so yeah, Namiki Black is my favorite black ink. Anyways, stick around and you'll see why this one is a close second and where it kind of fell apart. That said, I guess I can understand the name to an extent. There is some debate on if black pearls really exist or if they are just darker spectrums of blue, green, and a few other colors. Either way, a pearl that can hit the darker spectrums does tend to garner a good price due to its rarity. This ink, thankfully, is neither high priced nor rare, and that is definitely a good thing. On the plus side, this ink is extremely bold on the page. Water performance is very impressive, at least by my standards, if you exclude Noodler's inks. And overall, I find the ink to be very well lubricated, and it does have amazing flow. If they could have gotten the dry time where it needed to be, then yeah, I would have been on board with this being my new favorite. As it is though, it makes for a very well done second place. So now that we've gotten through the TLDW, let's talk about that dry time. First up is Rhodia. This is somewhat respectable from the broad nib with the ink being dry at just under 20 seconds. When we move on over to Tomoe, this is where it kind of lost it for me. We end up being over 20 seconds and that takes it out of the realm of daily driver and almost out of the realm of a journal ink. But let's move on from the what went wrong and look at the what went right. And for that, we're looking at the water test. With how long this ink takes to dry and with how much goes down on the paper, I'm not surprised to see color lift here. But as we get the page dried off, I was pleasantly surprised by this result. We are left with a pretty good recovery layer. So as long as you aren't in a fast paced environment and aren't using Tomoe, this water performance can help bring this ink closer to the workplace. Now, before we take a look at the writing sample, let's take a look at the ink blot. When you get the ink spread out on the page like this, the mid-tones have a nice light charcoal to them, and there isn't much in the way of lighter tones past that. What I like the most though, are the deeper mids that fade into the transition tones. Remember that part about pearls not being fully black? Well, that is on display here. You can see the blue underlayer on this ink. So if anything, those portions really do live up to the pearl black moniker. Also, I'm really glad that we don't get sheen here. Sometimes I want an ink that picks a color and just does that color well. And this black ink, well, it does just that. Coming out of the pen, we get a nice deep oil slick black and for that color, it's a very nice dynamic. So now let's take a look at how this ink looks coming out of a pen. First up is Rhodia. Initial observation is that there are no mids. Out of a broad nib, this ink starts off as true black and just stays there. The contrast to the page almost looks unreal, especially when compared to that gray ink we looked at a few weeks ago. Focusing back on performance indicators, the sub 20 seconds on dry time definitely means that I will be using this more for general notes and less for journaling but that isn't a bad thing. Unlike some of the other Kaveco inks, I'm not losing any line width. Hard starting and skipping are pretty much non-existent, and the flow? Well, it's on point from this Kaveco Sport. So on Rhodia, yeah, it's almost all upside. I mean, sans dry time. I see nothing wrong here, and I'm perfectly fine with recommending this combination. Moving over to Tomoe though, we get a bit of a different story. Let's start off with the similarities. Contrast on the page is just as intense as it is over on Rhodia. And you can see by the ink smear, we definitely have good flow confirmation. If anything, I would actually say that the ink looks slightly more bold over on Rhodia, which is kind of weird. I mean, normally that is the other way around. Much like Rhodia though, there is no dynamic range on display, and we also see a consistent line width from this pen. So aside from the overall contrast, the only true sticking point is the dry time. You may be able to see it here on camera, but as I'm writing, I'm definitely noticing the slower dry time. While I was working on the script for this video, I actually had to pay extra attention to where my fingers were at all times to prevent smearing. 
for faster riders or lefties, this ink probably would not be a good fit. Once you get to the 25 to 30 second dry time range, usability in a lot of situations kind of goes out the window. And here on Tomoe, that is exactly what we get, which is kind of sad because like I said at the top of the video, if this ink had hit the dry time, then it would easily be my all time favorite. But that's gonna do it for this final ink in the Kaveco ink line, Kaveco Pearl Black. If you like this video, then hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and if you have an extra dollar or two lying around every month and wanna help support the channel, then click on that Patreon link down below. Till the next video, don't drink the ink.